Hello there, my fellow mathematicians. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, and I'm probably never going to say that I love math, but right now we have new tourists. Emily hurried past the crowds in cars, slamming to the doors of the local pub, Gornenich, masked by the commotion of the place. Sam, darling, where are you? She stalked every patron of the back alley tavern, a futile search that only turned up rowdy locals and other drunk tourists in the corner of the bar. Emily noticed a quiet man dressed in the same overcoat she saw guards wear upon arrival in Russia. Darn it, Sam, where are you? We're being watched. Struggling through a group of farmers, Emily slipped and nearly fell on the table, across from which sat Sam, surrounded by cheery locals, flagging in him. Oh, darling, she smiled. I want to show you something. Her husband, drunk beyond hope, could only nod and follow in a strange walk. Tagging him across and out of the pubs, Emily scanned the street, turned and whispered, What were you thinking, making a fool of yourself? You left the hotel hours ago. Sam hugged his wife, quickly pushed away. <laughs> I was only gone for five minutes. Silently, Emily prepared a speech, but saw the overcoat man in the valley on the other street watching them. She grabbed her husband's hand and rushed in the hotel's direction. It was not until the couple had settled in for that night that Emily dropped her guard. When morning came, she escaped her husband's hangover, visiting other t for tourists in the lobby. Oh, and how many there were, flooding in all from all over the world, and the overcoat man stood amongst them. As we're trying to finish up the patriotic Russian army, I think I read this yesterday, so if you want to read this again, please go right ahead. I could be completely wrong, my apologies, but I go through so many uh, focuses that I literally... I have to look at the end of every episode to see what I've already uh, read, so there you go. Cool. But diplomacy without prejudice or revitalize the obstacle. That's not bad. Ooh. The failings of the Union. You know what? We really need more military factories since we are actually really not in a good position between us and Svedlosk. So, Bukharin's A cursed union was a rotten project. A structure designed by members of the Russophobic Intelligentsia. Bukharin's Bukharin's unwillingness to go all in on military and heavy industry costs the lives of millions of Russians. But we will do better. Already several military factories are being built or repaired. Our men will not lack weapons to liberate the Russian people. No, they will not. And let's go and do that too. Very good. So right now, yeah, I mean, like we established at the end of the last episode, these guys are going to go under him. They're probably going to integrate them. That's going to be great for us. But on a more positive note, everything we did yesterday, I mean, if you look at the GDP growth, 8.4%, annual debt is 9%. Really not that bad, but state and nation. Exit from Infantryman's Manual, page 82. All Russian soldiers, true to heart, must defend his nation at all costs. Everything else is secondary. The Russian people, our way of life, is infinitely superior to that of other cultures. The state is a people. And therefore, to ensure the survival of the nation, one must protect the state. The world is large and cruel, and it is also deadly. As an infantryman, you must be prepared to enter fatal combat. Be willing to accept wound and death, but also be strong of heart. Never flee the field, nor desert your comrades. Furthermore, Desertion is one of the highest slights one can inflict on the Russian nation. By retreating, you are helping the enemy and will be punished as a traitor deserves. Remember, by betraying the state, either due to a moral or ideological reason, you are betraying the Russian nation and contributing to its demise. Be prepared to give your life for the state for our land. Memories of the front. Oh, I should have asked you guys yesterday which one we should have done. Stability and war support. Or stability and war support. Um, if, I'm going to go with memories of the German front just because we could probably really use more... War support now, even though we're probably actually at technically the max. But if you want to read about memories of the Liberation Wars, please go ahead. We're going to go and do memories of the German Front. Many may not agree with our national democratic ideology, unfortunately. Many of our fellow Russians have often been the victims of propaganda from communist regimes for decades. If one era creates unity, it's a memory of the wars with Germany. To us already, our brothers have fought German invaders. Our government is the likeliest candidate to face Germany a third and final time, which we will do in this episode. Or not this episode, but this campaign. All those who pick up arms to defend the Russians are welcome in our nation. We must let this fact be known. So, there's nothing we do here. We got some better support weapons, which is great. We're going to keep going with that direction because we are actually really behind on technology. Oh my goodness, it's so bad. <gasps> Look at that. We were at 8.4% earlier, but now we're at 9.1%. Oh, so good. Now, the debt, we just can... Well, we can't really ignore it yet because we have such a massive deficit. But uh, I'd love to do more regional development stuff. This stuff is going to just be a pain in the butt for us. It's, we're not going to be able to do any of this stuff here, which... They're in the sphere, they're aligned, that sucks for us. It just sucks so hard. But members of the German front, we want more war support. Oh, uh, what do we have down here? Oh, uh, you know what, let's do it. Diplomacy without prejudice. The time has come when we let the world know that the lawless wastes of Russia are lawless no more, for our government has brought them under its wing. In order to secure ourselves on the stage of international diplomacy, however, we must secure foreign recognition and, more importantly, alliances. But long past the days of the coalitions, the Entente and the UN, where Russia would be subservient to the West and sacrifice her sons for the other world's victories, or the power's victories, or as it happened in the Second World War. Their crushing defeats, of course. If we are to rebuild the pedestal we once stood on, we aim to not stand alone, but 
before this gargantuan task to work with their future allies, of course, without compromising Russia's own sovereignty. At least, that is the goal. A couple comments. So, I, I said yesterday that we're using the mod called the West, or probably Second West Russian War. Uh, that, that mod. Uh, what it does, someone was asking, is at the end of us unifying all of Russia. What the heck? All of Russia here? Well... That looks really cool. Yuri Galinskov, looking really cool. But what that mod does, it allows us to go to war with Germany for, I think, Kiev. Of course, Moscow and maybe Riga. I've done it. I've used it before. Actually, I think I played as Suslov, I think. I can't remember exactly. But, yeah, it, it's difficult. But it, it's totally possible. And we'll see what happens when we go to war with them. Cool. Another comment was, someone says, I should try to campaign as Germany with the expert AI mod on, on hard difficulty. I wasn't exactly sure which mod that person was referring to. Was it TNO or just like vanilla or something like that? Maybe Road to 56. I'm not exactly sure, so I please let me know in the comments below if you ask that. Like, I've never tried something like that. I've tried the expert AI mod before. I played as Japan and vanilla, but I'm kind of open to doing it again if you really want me to, maybe sometime. But on the way to Washington, I want to revitalize the officer corps. The wars of unification have left their mark on our military leadership. Many brave commanders have fallen in battle. Others have been rendered lame and impotent by the shock of arms and are unable to demonstrate the vital energy necessary to the salvation of Russia. We must promote new officers from the ranks, veterans with a proven knack for leadership and a proper devotion to Russia. Our officer's corps will be revitalized by this injunction of new blood. And we like new blood. Very nice. Alright, very nice. Even though getting the extra command power does nothing for us. It literally does nothing. So once it hits 69, then we'll be able to go to war, or at least prepare for war against Svedlovsk, which will be good. Alright, America. Envoy time! Among the myriad of nations, few dared to oppose the German Reich at the time of its conquest, and even fewer do still. Pioneering this fight is another hegemon, the United States of America, and their organization of free nations. And before we continue on, let's go ahead and... Uh, do some of the spending. Oh, spend. Big baby, spend. Though some circles in Russia see the U.S. in a negative light, viewing their reluctance to join the war effort against Germany in the past as traitorous cowardice. We have to move past beyond these animosities, as the international realities dictate that in the existing diplomatic environment, the UFN could be our only real ally against the Nazis. However, while cooperation birth by convenience would be beneficial to both us and the Americans, of course, they may be reluctant at accepting our unique cultural formation as part of the so-called free world. It would be, therefore, to be our, in our advantage if we send a delegation to the UFN and bridge a gap of our differences sooner rather than later. Free infrastructure? Yes, please, Big Daddy. Alright, anti-air. Let's get, just get more gun stuff for now. And we'll get some more military construction after that. Um, 65, really. Resources might not be bad. Where are we on? Actually, we're doing really, really well on resources. Really, really well. Wow. I'm somewhat impressed with all those resources we got. Artillery, because who doesn't love a good Ati? A call to consciousness? Perhaps. Historically, Russia's failures in foreign policy came primarily from diplomatic isolation and a lack of cooperation with their allies as such. Our diplomatic efforts must be directed towards preventing disputes between us and our partners in the progressive world. While the UFN mistrusts us for our government's authoritarian leanings, they surely cannot deny the plight that Russia undertook in the name of liberty back in 1941. In many ways, abandoned by her Western allies, she suffered in blood and eventually tragically perished under the jackboot of the Reich. We must remind our brothers in arms that this legacy forever ties us together, and we must honor it by never abandoning each other in the times of crisis again, until we have a Cold War, maybe. Second Cold War, Third Cold War, something like that. Cool. Oh, oh, oh good. The United States of America has agreed to set up embassies, and we can now enact or engage in diplomatic relations with them. If you wonder about that, please go ahead. The president has wished us luck in rebuilding the motherland and hopes that Russia will not stray from the path of democracy. A bright future. Uh, Oklahoma led by... Oh, Mr. Mr. Bennett. Hello, Mr. Bennett. Construction, yes. Oh, whoops. Well, it's all right. We get more weekly manpower, which is fine. Uh, honestly, actually, you know what? We're going to do everything here we can. Just because we, we need it. We 100% need it. Because eventually we're going to run out of manpower when we're fighting the war against the Germans. So, yeah. Let's, we'll, we'll take any guy we can get. Um, reopen the academics. It is ironic that the war has shuttered many of the military academies of Western Russia. We must make it a priority to reopen these centers of learning where the next generation of defenders of the country will be trained. Some might condemn our hastiness to get to the academies back up and running, our willingness to let old educators return to their jobs. We scoff at these critics. Our vetting process has been thorough and only instructors of good character will teach our future commanders. And uh, I liked, uh, actually, quite a few, few of your comments from yesterday, but one that I want to pull out from uh, the last video was like, You call me a fascist, yet I strive for social justice and the preservation of nature. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. 
Um, oh, oh, yeah, get some more of those guys. That'll be good. That'll be some good stuff. And then, oh, yes, land option. The organic command structure. The Bolsheviks sought to align the military theory with their political ideology. While the hateful worldview provided a few military advantages to the Red Army, the idea of aligning a nation's army with how it functions is not a terribly bad one. Our officer corps can make use of our theories of the organic Russian nation. Each man has a role, every structure has its purpose. By designing a solid hierarchy and by equipping the system with secondary fallback structures, we can imbue the Russian people's traditional willingness to defend what's theirs into our increasingly modernized army. Stability, we're like, man, nothing here too, it's too demanding that we need to do immediately. And we get some more army XP, some air XP, some naval XP. Oh, we love the XP. And what are we missing? Support equipment's looking very good. We need planes, anti tank, and tanks. We actually have a good amount of artillery. Ooh, a good amount of artillery, you say. That's not bad. Up next, the military police wouldn't be bad, but we don't really need that yet. Um, we actually might want to get some anti air. I actually might use anti air. Hmm. Because that's not bad so far. We'll, we can lower this by 5. Lower it by 5 for now. But we're going to need it later. And we'll put you actually at the bottom. Because I do want to get more cast. I, we, actually, we need to get better planes. Holy crud. So after that, it's not bad. Developments on the Kalashnikov. Which I love my Kalashnikov. Ah, good. Better tanks. Better planes. I'll go for jet engines immediately. Uh, base bleed. It was slightly ahead of time, which is fine. Let's go 66 then. 10% more soft attack is so nice. Expand from the army. Let's do eyes to Europe next. Not all nations in Europe today lie under the German jackboot. There remain a few precious states with whom we, we share a commonality in our mutual rejection of German hegemony. We must seek out and align ourselves with these nations. Every nation which, with which we are endeared may become an ally, and the more allies we have, the weaker the German giant becomes. We must keep alert for any who may become a companion of ours in our crusade against Germany. Any rebellious Reichskommissariat or democratic stronghold that remains in free Europe must be approached and supported if given the chance. Yes, yes. We must play this game of chess. And we must play it well. We'll do three foursome. Nice. Every time I say foursome, everyone always thinks of like some sort of devious little sexual act. I'm like, just, just a group of four people. Jeez. That's all. Anyway, anyways, the Northern Lights. Russia and the nations of Scandinavia have intertwined their historical paths since time immemorial. Many times as partners and many more as rivals. The day approaches when we have to act as honor bound allies again, for we will fall divided before our common enemy. Otherwise. And while the Nordic family, the freedom fighters of Norway and Sweden, may not be too eager to broaden the Brotherhood, our diplomats will do their best to establish mutual cooperation. But if you'd like to read about better industrial equipment, please go right ahead. That's excellent. We have factory complexes. Oh, good. More outputs. Good. Good stuff. Artillery's great. Anti tank is coming on very nicely. Castle's looking pretty good, too. Fighters, not too bad either. Very good. Good old Northern Lights. We have so much pee, pee now. The journey to the Eternal City, while to the naked, naked eye, the destinies of Italy and Russia bear quite little resemblance in truth. They are not that dissimilar. In the sense that both are noble nations, share a tragic history of betrayals by those we deem close allies, and both now hold in their hearts a vendetta against the Germans. It is time that we become more than friends of misery, as they provide us with recognition, so we might one day march together against the tyranny of the, uh, the Reich. Which I, if I remember correctly, is under Papa Bormann, but... I wonder, how many divisions does, does Baatop have? Because he's actually really strong. He's not easy to beat. He's really not easy. Ah, uh, so they have Ornberg and the little stupid sphere. 34,000 manpower, but they have up to 47 divisions. Cold days, if you'd like to read about that, please go ahead. Oh, boy. Mm, at this point, I'm just going to close it. I don't care. I don't care anymore. Uh, just do this stuff. That's fine. Cool. Awesome. A grand show let us see who will stand tall in the end. The Northern Lights. Journey to the Eternal City followed up with what? A new place in the world. When the West Russian war collapsed, we were condemned and left to die, alone, fractious, and slowly corroding from within. We were laughed at by all, respected by none, and we watched external enemies poison even a small nation with ideological poison. We were, for it was assumed, done for. The world has never been so wrong. We are back in business. Our armies march to fields uncertain or uncharted since old Moscow burned, and our enemies look to us with increasing fear. Yes. There's a song echoing in the Siberian hotlands, a song of purity and of true freedom, and of strength, eternal, and the nation that lives is our own, and nothing can drown it out. Chaos in the car. Central African Republic. I've never seen this one before. Whoa. The African crisis? Imperialism leaves behind germs of rot, which we must clinically detect and remove from our land, but our, from our minds as well. 
Chaos has once more come to the African continent as a Central African Republic, hailed as a great democratic experiment, has seemingly collapsed into a multitude of new nations. While the exact details of what led to this result will likely remain tightly kept secrets for years, if not decades, experts agree that it most likely speaks to a lack of confidence from the American government. The many variables that the car was forced to juggle multiply the difficulty of any sort of decolonization process many times over. The U.S. president did not explain the reasons for the failure in a recent press conference, but did state that any free country in Africa looking for a friend could find one in the U.S. We harbor no ill will to any of the nations of Africa. They were quoted, or Bennett was quoted as saying, The minute we, were, we are called for, we will answer. We will not refuse the quest of anyone because simply of our own mistakes. Will they listen? I've never seen them explode this hard. Holy crap. Wolfgang Reinhold. MPLA, which makes sense. Uh, Republic of Angola. I don't remember seeing him before. Wow. Bennett, you screwed up so hard. Oh, let's see. Zambia. Or who's this? What's one is Zimbabwe Democratic Front? Bennett, dude. Dude, what did you do? Silver uh, Purchase Act, huh? That's pretty good. Nice. A new place in the world, though. Yeah, that was definitely next. Oh, and there goes Africa. <sighs> Africa just doing African things. Okay, Ben is gone now. MCS is here. Can't you keep your party united? Maybe. Just maybe. We have 30 divisions. Not enough. 34, 30 divisions of faulty combat with divisions. Oh, we need more guns now. Oh, crap. That's not good. All right, then. Any more anti-tank, of course. Um, little, little by five, it really declines. It tells to refuse exchange. Ambass embassies, lacking, citing our lack of proper Republican processes. Rampant corruption, they've also accused the regime of conspiring with the Germans to sabotage their influence in Europe. <sighs> so much for cooperation, you pieces of garbage. Um, research, research, research. Oh, you read this too? Ah, this up. Yeah. More men. Oh, yes, give us those, those men. Expand from the army. We know how reliable the army is from the early days of the Passionary. Much of our grassroots support was drawn from the rank and file of the officers' corps and the regular infantry. Their model encourages the growth of the values we prize most. Discipline, honor, patriotism, and courage. And a little innovative borrowing of their training methods will surely produce a rush that is hardened and, oh yes, pure. Investments in the army and the militarization of much of our civilian life will introduce these concepts from young, starting with our massive uniformed group alliance, the Young Russian Corps. These pioneers will be the vanguard of a sea of change in the Russian constitution, a return to the greatness once embodied in us. Nice. Yes, 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 yes. Good. I love clicking buttons. It makes it for have a lot of fun times. And we just made another two divisions. Yes. Because I guess I think I said in the last episode I want 80 divisions. Like we need to get thick. Like if we don't have a fat army, we're gonna die. But a fat but good army, really. Alright. And you know what? They lose war support, that's good. I think we lost war support too, but better research facilities if you want to do that, please go ahead. We'll get back to the schools eventually. Oh oh, whoa! I didn't even click anything on my mouse, but okay. It just left. Reclaim the skies, developments on the Kalashnikov. The AK-47 is one of the finest rifles to come out of Russia, possibly ever, and it's one of my favorite. It's cheap to produce, extremely reliable, and has replaceable parts, and of course it's simple to understand and use as it stands. The rifle is unparalleled, this needs to change. While the design is superior in every capacity compared to older rifle models, this is rather unremarkable in the history of the rifle developments. The next generation of guns will always be superior to the last, and the AK-47's excellent design today may become obsolete tomorrow. We mustn't be content to rest on our laurels while rifle technology and other nations surge Ahead, especially those of the submachine gun. Serbia goes into isolation. Goodbye, Serbia. Oh, look at that. We got that 150,000 manpower from the um, the thingy here. So, pretty nice. One, two, th one, two, three, four, five, some. Not bad, not bad. While well, the debt goes way up, but whatever. That's what I mean. Not bad. Uh, apply MBT designs. D Designing a tank suited for our particular needs is no simple task. Not only must it be reliable enough to trudge through the muddy swamps of Western Russia during Rasputia, but also must be fuel efficient enough to operate for enough hours or even a few days without refueling. Worse yet, any tank we design must have the armor to tank a shell or two from a German tank and hit back just as hard. Our tank technology is now decades behind that of Germany, so developing such a tank will take time, applying what lessons we learned from the Unification Wars would serve as a starting point at the very least. Hey, look at that. 35 divisions. War on the horizon. The winner takes off. If you wonder about that, please go ahead. Very good. Poverty relief. Foreign instructors. Sign us up, baby boys. And because they might literally strike at any moment, we're going to be done training because our guys are at least regulars. Nice. Do we have any spare planes here? Can we duplicate you? Yes, we can, but you only have seven. That sucks. Cass. Get some more Cass. 
Like I said, we definitely need more factories. Ah, development on the Kalashnikov. Absolutely essential. Modernity in function. The Russian nation has constantly reinvented itself time and time again. Of course, in response to foreign threats and internal change, it is time to embrace once change once again and not to dilute Russia's essence, but to keep it stronger than at first. We will drive our industries and our governmental institutions to modernize, keeping them rooted in our ruralist values while expanding their administrative capacities. With this new concept of organic bureaucracy being pushed by some of our more enterprising thinkers, we are confident that our slice of Russia shall soon touch the pinnacles of efficiency, while keeping itself rooted in Russian soil. Very good. Happy May, everyone. Happy, happy May. Begin the invasion. No, we're not going to go to war. We want to be on the defensive here, so. And they haven't integrated, but... Yep. And there we go. See? Oh, wow. Look at that. They are attacking, and they're doing quite well, but... Time will tell what will happen. I can't quite justify us moving our lines just yet, but go to Ornberg. Go swarm them. Because we need to move fast enough here. Oh, man. They are really beating us up here in some, some of these locations. We lost probably... 9,000. 32,000 against them is not bad. Uh, how much manpower did they have to start off with, though? That's my question. Uh, that's a lot of divisions, but we're catching up. 100,000 manpower is quite a bit. Um, our pride of the seas. The Navy was once laughed out of the government offices as a tool of war. We were landlocked, poor, and underdeveloped. How could we? How could dreams of a freshwater fleet ever come into fruition? We shelved these thoughts away until we were capable of expanding on them. On them. Now it seems the time has come for them to blossom. We'll invest in dockyards and begin construction of a na native fleet of our own, developed primarily for coastal navigation and trade shipping protection. It'll be a limited utility navy, and it will be utterly pale in comparison to our rivals, but we will have to start somewhere. Petrograd, after all, was not built in a single day. Come on, can we go to war with these guys? Let us go, 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 go. Come on, because these guys are going to continue attacking us, which is really bad. But whatever. Jesus Christ, they're really tough. Come on, do we have Ornberg yet? Come on. Oh, oh, these guys must have... Oh my goodness, the Cheetah Republic. Whoa. I've never seen this before. Did... Was it the Divine Man of Siberia? Did it explode? It must have. Whoa. Bratia Ivanov? Whoa, 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 whoa. That is... That's a little wild, man. That's that's pretty darn wild, in my opinion, man. That's really cool. There we go. We got Ornberg. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's good. All right, so at this point, um... What are you guys doing here? Euro League? I'm going to assume they're not going to do anything. Just come back up here. Get everyone up here. Um, if you... Oh, that's pretty risky. We lost a lot of guys, 64,000. We've almost lost as much as they have, so... At this point, we got to get back up here and hold, hold, hold. The lines, baby, the lines. This is going to not be easy. Oh, Ornberg, yes. Yes. You want to do this crap to us? All right, die then. Seriously, just die. Oh, we got better engineers now, better entrenchment. Thank you very much. More soft attack would be nice. We're so far behind in technology, it's not even funny, man. They're in completely independent. Expertise is Latel, so they're running out of manpower. 44 divisions. We have, of course, 35, which is fine, but whatever. Uh, we're proud of the seas of the fleet. It's fine. Let our guys get to where they need to be first. Actually, you guys go straight in, and that's fine. You'll be more than e easily beat these guys up. All right, let's reclaim the skies. The Russian Air Force can rumble as an effective institution after the collapse of the Union, and the ensuing decades have not exactly proven conductive to its rebuilding. Now that we've begun our ascent in the world, it's time to change all this for good. Just as Russia was made strong by its army, so too shall our skies be kept pure from small nations' parasites by our fighters. Doing this, of course, is easier said than done. We must begin to overhaul our shattered air, air infrastructure, including a functioning airway network, and our body of aeronautical supplies for this plan to ever become viable. Even so, we must cling to the dream. One day, the skies will echo with Russia, with Russian again. Again, and they will be our own. Alright, boys, you ready to go again? We'll see what we can do here. It won't be easy, but it's possible to win. Good. Oman's killing Oman. That's good, good, good. Oh, are they attacking us here too, huh? All right, that's fine with me. Attack us, attack us, attack us, attack us. I want to attack up here. 
That's one that's one big tile, holy crap. Pride of the seas, we claim this guy's. Nice. Are you done attacking us, you pieces of garbage? Nonsense. You're gonna die here. You're gonna enjoy it. Infantry ruffles, go ahead and begin the invasion here. I'll get some of that too. Better guns, even though we're probably really out of them. Maybe not, we're out of them, huh? Okay. Good. We have no tanks yet, but we're saving that for the next one. How did you lose that battle? That's BS. Go in, go, 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 go. Good. Go in. You're not going to waste time here, you pieces of garbage. You are literally not allowed to waste time. You're going to hold. Three divisions here. Force defense. I don't care what it takes. You're going to have to hold here because we're going to kill off five plus four is usually nine. Usually. Oh, I don't want to do this one, but... Compassion before materialism. There are many businesses that provide essential services or products for our nation as a whole. These are private businesses that include private hospitals and the few steel foundries we have in our country, or even a private postal service. If it's deemed necessary for the state to function or for the populace to survive in the adequate condition, the government will assume responsibility for these companies. If they are in danger of collapsing or going bankrupt, the state should therefore be able to prop up these businesses in their time of need. Oh, that's going to be painful for that PP. Oh, that's going to suck. Kill every last one of them off. No peace with these guys. Good. They died. 200,000 men lost. We've lost 100,000. And now we're on a more equal playing field now. Which is nice. Let the guys get some planning done. Let them go to where they need to go. Iberia's falling apart. That's cool. Don't really care too much, I'll be honest, right now. Um, cool. If you guys can help out here, too, that'd be great, great, great. How much more manpower do you have? 1,000. That's not bad. Oh, how dare you. Alright, well, you want to go there? Alright, I can understand that. I'll take this out then. Die, you pieces of garbage. Alright, go in. Go in. Oh, yes, please. Oh, upgrades, perhaps? Uh, nothing really there. You have nothing really either. Larianov is kind of okay still. Nice. They're claiming this, guys, and this one I don't want to do, but more money is nice and all, but still. But hopefully it will replace with prosperity through harmony. Russia is coming closer to true class cooperation than it has ever in the course of history. By incorporating the tenets of corporatism and socialism into our administrative philosophy, we've made great strides in creating an equitable society in which the interests of all are protected. Corporations are making money, the workers are making their due, and the peasants and farmers are living a higher quality of life than ever before. And the government has become only more democratic and stable. There's a harmonious cooperation between the classes and interests of the people on big business that has ensured our prosperity, and will continue to ensure it for the years to come. But you get more construction speed, I don't mind that, but still. We still have to be careful here. Like, they're not, like, that weak. They still have some strength here, which sucks, but whatever. Nice. Are they attacking here, too? No, they're not. That just sucks. Uh, they're attacking here, but... Mm. I want you to do a lot of damage to them. Lots and lots of damage. 103,000 versus a quarter million, not bad, not bad. They should be out of manpower by now, so any damage we do, we, we they can't replace. Which is very scary when you're on when you're in that position. Oh, incredibly scary. Very good, very good. Oh, yes. This is what I've been waiting for, more equipment? Yes, double industrial equipment. That's very cool. Good. 40 divisions. 40 fat boy divisions, never enough. There you go. Um, right here would be nice, but, uh, go there. Can you guys go here, too? There you go. Attacking from all sorts of different sides. That's looking not too bad. Not too bad. Slowly chipping away at their strength. That's all we want to do. I'd like to attack here, too. Uh, I guess you're going to. Yeah, that's fine. Compassionate before materialism. Prosperity through harmony. Uh, how does that help our money? It doesn't. Huh. 
Not really, no. Still gotta be careful. And then toiling for the community. There seems to be a mindset amongst the younger generation about their elders. This idea that they toiled under the Tsarists and Soviet regimes before them with little or nothing to show for the work. They believe that hard work is a farce. The next generation is shopping up to be the laziest yet. We must show them that this thinking is false. All the hard work they put in will be repaid tenfold to the community that they will be able to participate in. All the work they do is for the public good, not just for them, but for all of us. If they can understand that fact, they will be better motivated to work hard. Oh, more math, max factories and say and more output. I'm okay with that. That's, that seems pretty nice, actually. I want to save two for this one, and you guys help out here too. That's good. Ah, forty-three divisions, not bad. Oh, look at those tanks. They don't have. They just. They don't have enough for tanks. The more times. I mean, their their tanks are taking an. Ex I would say. I was going extreme, but a very huge amount of losses every time we attack them. You guys help here too. That's good. Uh, you guys help here too. The infantry, not so much. The infantry are probably like forty combo with, or like twenty-seven or something weird. But yeah, that's not too bad overall. Uh, go in here. Slowly getting easier with every push. Do we have anything? Ah, oh, yes. Free infrastructure. More resources. Always good. Always good. I'm about ready to do a general attack, but we still look at that tank division. It's literally just going to die because it's running out of strength. So nice. Finish up this part of the focus tree with this? Great. They might win there, actually, but we will beat them up in other places, too, so... Help him out, help him out. Ah, best jet fighters. So good. Nice. How did you lose here? That's because of air superiority, probably. We probably don't have enough. Let's still doing air damage. We're looking pretty good with air stuff, actually. You guys go in. They must be, like, having elite infantry here or something. I don't know. Their support wounds are nice, though. I've got this, too. Good. How many losses? 150,000, maybe? Oh, yeah, about that much for a third of a million. That's not bad. All right. Push even harder. Push even harder into these guys. Come on. Don't give up the fight. Good. What are they doing? How are we losing? Is it a mountain? Is that a mountain province? It's hard to tell. It's, it's really hard to tell. Oh, it is. Okay, that makes sense then. That's that's really, really hard to tell if it's a mountain province or not. What are we out of? Guns? Guns and artillery. Oh, now we're out of guns and artillery and anti-tank. God dang it. Order collapses there. There you go. Svedlovsk, you are just killing off Russia's manpower for no reason. Literally no reason at all. These people want to doom Russia. Forever. And we will not stand for it. Come on, kill them off. Kill them off. Use that artillery we gave you. Yes, more weekly manpower would be very good. Tolling for the community. Great. Give us a couple more days. Do we have any more upgrades yet? Probably not. No. Because we're out of guns. Let's not attack too much right now. Let's actually create an agency from here on out. This way we can start uprooting some more entrenchment. Now if we wait a little bit. They'll get a, more, a little more manpower maybe. Oh, actually less divisions than us, which is really nice. But they're out of equipment. Except for a little bit of infantry equipment. Just a little bit. Construction, yes. Good. But, oh, yes! Our better armor professional. If you want to build that, please go ahead. Excellent. Why does it auto? Why does it auto click? I don't even click. I don't even click it with my mouse. What the heck? That literally makes no sense. How are we losing here? Is this? A, why is everything a mountains province here in Russia? Everything in Russia here is a mountain. It's so hard to tell where the mountains are sometimes. But as soon as we take it, they won't be able to use it. So, good, 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 good. Military police, logistics, helicopter, let's grab some of that. Good. Go in, kill them off. What are you going there for? Oh, no, 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 no. Keep boosting, keep boosting, keep spending, keep making, keep creating. 
Oh, it's just a force now. Oh, that mole just literally died there. Holy crap. Nice. Keep it up. Keep it up. Both of you go here. Good. Nice. Because we're definitely going to need this for the Germans, so. That's a lot of divisions right there. Oh, they're attacking us. Good. Good. Let them waste themselves. 200,000, 176 versus 384. Uh, hmm. Maybe we're going to put up his good head. And modern modern agriculture. Wow, that's great. Wow, that's actually really impressive. Good. Uh, I do want to attack here, but this is mountains, right? Yeah, it's mountains. That sucks. Well, they do want to attack. I mean, we can help oblige them by attacking him here anyways. They have, like, no strength, which is good to see. Good, good, good. So let's come over here. Uh, go over here. Nice. Ah, oh, German missile deployment. Nice. At some point soon, we're going to do a general attack. I promise you that. Sometime soon. Not yet, but sometime soon. Novorosk. These are times now. Go. All in. All in, boys. Any strength that they do not have, well, they can't replace, so. Nice. Industrial espionage. Uh, politically connected. No. Pavel Nikitin then. How many Russians do you want to kill off Pavel Batov? How many? How many? That is a question. We have 46 divisions. And I think they're not quite broken yet, but they're pretty close. You want to rebuild that? Let's go ahead. Yay. We've killed off way too many Russians. Almost, well, more than half a million have died in this pointless war. Absolutely pointless, irresponsible war led by Pavel. 9.8 billion, that's not bad. Or 9.8%, should I really say. Great, forward. They lose it, we become stronger. Awesome, awesome. Keep going. There's no stopping here. 22 divisions left. Yay! The plant has been captured. Nice. Get better, Jetcast 2. Hey, answer come on. Nice. There you go. Hey, you're about up. Let's go ahead. We got him, my friends. We got him. Oh, we need to do the Euro War, I guess. Destroy the traitor? Yes, please. Good. Go ahead and integrate it right here. Um, Euro, Euro War. There's Russian reunification. I guess we can do that one. The Russian Free Republic? Uh, I want to see if we can get any more of that stuff down there. Like, like, improve society, but... How do we kill off the Euro League, then? We have well. Hey, we destroyed it. A short-lived leader with a strange new ideas. Nothing new. Nice. Well, my friends, we just became the Russian Free Republic. An extra influence in Kazakhstan. Uh, do that, and then you do this to come over here. Um, how can we take these guys out? Well, I guess we'll start off with the Great Unif Unif Uniter. Every century or so, the Russian nation produces a political genius. At even rarer in intervals than that, Russia births a unifier. A leader who can embody and guard the values of the motherland at its time of greatest need. For every time of troubles, and Ivan the Great. For every Napoleon, a Catherine. The time of the unifier is again at hand as Oppenjur's Igor Shevevich. Shevevich will build this nation neither on the false pietisms of the fascists nor the moral degradation of the leftists. Russia will be shaped by what has always made it great, the purity of its soil and the refined disposition of its people. Only a moral Russia can be a strong Russia, and only a strong Russia can be great. We will find the will to cast those parasites who impede us in this mission, and God help us, when freedom shines once more upon the Rodina, it will be a true and lasting one. Absolutely. 
We need more artillery. And tanks. Artillery, tanks, planes. Hmm. Do we actually have a lot of anti tank now? We have a lot of anti tank, which is nice to see. Uh, we can probably go back to 10. That's fine. That's good. That's good. You're next. Good. And end of wonders, we're about to go ahead. Boom. Um, honestly, like, how do we do with these guys? If not, I might just have to manually annex them. Because the Euro League should not exist still, so. I might have to do that off screen. We'll see. It might be a bug, it might not be. If we can just go to war with them already, I'm just gonna do that. Just, just do it, it's fine. Train if you need to, though. Train if you need to. Uh, if you want to read about these, please go right ahead. I've already read this plenty enough times. So if you want to read about the to the atomic age, please go right ahead. Yearly cost of $100 million, that's fine. Established close facilities, please go right ahead. There you go. And a foundation for research. Address the reunion problem. Expand the cooking mines. Source full materials, as well as the chase of sun. But into the atomic age. F reflecting upon things long past. The scene was familiar to Shevevich. Once again, he was in his study, a candle by his side. The weak light il illuminated his work, the schematics for a road again. Chalk dust caked his hands, and he looked at his watch, almost done, yet his work could not wait. There were no longer fetters to his progress, no more Sislav, no more Stalino, Taboretsky, and sadly, no more Gumileyov. They missed, he missed them. Enemies they were, and adversaries, yet they almost seemed to be a callback to easier times when he was just a mathematician with a tenure at Ustasovsk University. It was again a row. It street plans, points of illumination, specifications of material. As the president of the republic, his work had come to take entire days to finish. It was rare that he got the chance to work on an independent project of his. The roads were uncluttered, clear ways of transport that ferried the pedestrians to their places safe and quick. He stopped. He stepped back and clapped his hands together, dispersing clouds of white over his uniform. Shafarovich would have sent for a servant downstairs to fetch him a basin of water, but he liked it that way. They can wash his shirts and trousers later. As the sun rose on the horizon, the work's significance became clearer and clearer, a reordering of the streets of Sislovsk, a project that would entail the destruction and reconstruction of the city. He laughed. He was proud, even if his work was pointless. Shevarevich had all the power to enforce his will, but he would not. Democracy was a useful tool, and he would like to maintain it. Now, to more important matters. Um, yeah. Reunify the motherland. Prepare for the unification war. Yeah. Oh, right. oh, oh maybe it's over here. Okay, decrease investment. Oh, we'll do that now. Okay, that's fine. Um, you guys do this then. That's fine. Having a, we have a more than enough divisions here. Yemeni victory in Arabia, very nice. So good. We have so many civvies still to build. Holy bad word daddies. Oh, good. Build, baby, build. So good. Not bad. Well. Twelve down there too, Jesus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Some. Nice. Oh, what else can we do here? Anything else we care about? More than a PP. Our GDP is looking really good though. Nope. Eh, fighting black market influence, I guess. It's fine. Over here, twenty-three billion in depth is not good, but the GDP is going fast enough that I'm not too concerned about it. But that's alright. Um well let's establish uh, close facilities and get to a foundation for research. Eventually, of course, eventually. Now, if you worry about this stuff, please go right ahead. Flamethrowers are nice. Cool. Academic base. Research base increases. Yes, 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 and yes. Because we have so much PP, it doesn't even matter. Um, it is 1970. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy, happy New Year, even though it's already uh, March. So, it is what it is. Infantry anti-tank. Oh, uh, get that line out attack. 30% is just... That's, that's, that's some good stuff, man. That is some real good stuff. Actually, this is before I forget. Boom, boom. Free millies, huh? Never enough free millies. Oh, don't forget this too, either. Uh, what are we lacking? Artillery, of course. Artillery, cast, tanks. Artillery, cast, tanks. There you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. We'll be okay in the future. There you go. Nice. Cool. 
And then the spiritual hegemon, yes. Long have we dealt with the people of Western Siberia and despotates, and have long we have awaited the return to the fold. Shevevich is convinced that an approach of generosity and benevolence is what will work best for the good of the nation as well as a whole. At all possible times, we will forestall the use of violence and attempt instead to reinforce our common interests. There is much to be gained by accepting our rulership, and at the end of the day, we are all Russians. However, should they refuse, special measures will be have to be taken to make these wayward children see sense. <sighs> Absolutely. When in doubt, just go right on ahead. You'll be fine. I mean, you're still, you know, 40 combo, so I'm not too worried about that. Any extra planes yet? No. Not really. Let's go and do that one. Because we will be soon at war with Kazakhstan. Oh, we have a tank! We have two tanks! Like I said, soon? More like now. Um, Anyone here with tank stuff? Gleb, probably not. Uh, I like the infantry. Who's really good on attack? Glad was pretty good, but that's for infantry, so I'll wait for that. Uh, yeah. This guy's got a lot of other stuff going for him. So, Vasily, thank you for joining us. Hey, at least we got tanks, though, now. It's really good. Good. Actually, these tanks are what? Not good enough. It's just straight up not good enough. Now, these are some thick boys. Maybe we'll get any tank. I don't know. We'll see. Anti error or something. I don't know. Something like that. Modernize the department. Very good. Very good. Very good. Um, just go ahead and start doing the cryptology for Germany. Nice. Sehr gut. A spiritual hegemony. A foundation for research, of course. Followed up with the counter Russophobic campaign. Promote. Ooh, yes. This one. Promote Russian. Traditions in the land of under hegemony. Many mansions claim a dominion over the Russian heart. Some of them are socialists of origin, some of monarchist roots, and some stem from foreign influences. There'll be more in the days to come, but if we are to expel these wayward ideas, we must build something of substance in its place. Oh, look at that, very nice. The glory must be on full display for. Oh, come on. Oh my god, how hard is this? Jesus Christ, come on, Japan. Kill yourself. The Russian glory must be on full display for its light to enlighten our people. Nothing else is acceptable. We will focus on the development of the rituals that tie us to the soil and to the nation. National holidays are the only the beginning of a full-scale revamp over our civic culture. Religious occasions, national commemorations of martyrs, and the enforcement of Russian language and history will ensure that the light of the Rus shines far brighter than the darkness that would which put it out. Good. So much I want to keep doing that stuff. We got to come down here too. We just need more output. More, 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 more. When in doubt, more. Yeah, seriously, Japan, go kill yourself. I don't care about Order 44 right now. I really don't give a crap about it. Go ahead, boys. And girls. And everyone who's going to die there. Yes, yes. Chop, chop. I know, tanks, you're very inexperienced, but that is no excuse to not go. Why are you sucking so hard? Alexander, go. There they go, nice. Very good. And the national self-sufficiency. In the time of the Tsar's Russia was a curse of rapacious. Even robbery in its treatment of rapaciousness. Even robbery in the treatment of the nation under its wing. It was said that the government would favor the death of ten indigenous residents to the impoverishment of a single Russian. Those days are long gone now and the empire's fading memory. But the problem that Tsar's face has been handed over to us. What approach shall we take to pres preserve our nationalist essence? Where are many faithful stewards of the people God has granted us dominion over? Shevevich believes he has a solution, an approach he calls self-sufficiency. Where in the non-Russian national communities shall see neither incorporation nor exploitation. Instead, the Russian nation shall focus on enriching its people, and the minorities within it can go their own way. They will be blessedly, truly free of the, land, the hands of the state, now and forever. How have we not won yet? That literally makes no sense. Alright, you guys are actually failing extremely hard right now, so I'm really disappointed in everyone here. So, yeah. Single front line. Beat the living crap out of them, please. It should not take this long to kill off a bunch of Kazakhs. We killed off a hundred thousand of them already. For the love of God, what are you giving them? Mercy or something? National democracy. 
We are the party of the masses. But if we do not uphold the voice of the Russian people, we are no better than the petty tyrants who claim the same title. We all fashion this rough clay as a new and lasting democracy, one that encompasses the breadth of our domain and its people, and as with every careful plotter, we will take care to dispose of any excess or spoiled materials before our work is complete. We will institute new democratic campaigns across the rural network, calling for mass political particip participation and voting rallies, but our own bureaucracy will take the greatest of pains to ensure that the external elements, the old enemies of Russia, will not infiltrate this expression of our greatest values. Glory to Russia. May our freedom stand forever unpainted. Please, just exterminate with extreme prejudice. That's all I want. Extreme prejudice. But I think that's going to conclude today's episode there, my friends. Tomorrow will probably be the last episode in which we will probably, well, probably try to go to war with the German Reich and hopefully save some manpower. But we'll see what happens. Thanks for watching. Uh, have a great rest of your day.